Hey guys, welcome back. Today, as you can see by the title and the thumbnail, we're going to be doing another Halo tier list. You guys really, really enjoyed the last one and I got so many comments asking for more, so I figured that I'd do not just one more, but quite a few more. So, I've got quite a few Halo tier lists releasing over the next few weeks, but today, we're ranking every single level from all the mainline Halo games. Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, Reach, 4, 5, and Infinite. So, it's going to be a big one. There are a lot of levels to rank today, so let's waste no more time and jump right in. So, starting out, we have an absolute banger of a level that's going to go straight into S plus tier. 343 Guilty Spark. I mean, I don't feel like I really need to say much about this. It was the introduction of the Flood. It did it in an absolutely fantastic and incredibly surprising way. I guarantee 90% of the people that first played CE, hell, 99% of them, had no idea what was coming when they went into that swamp facility. The whole reveal of the Flood was done absolutely perfectly. They built tension amazingly with the silence of the facility and with the cutscene, of course, that built up to the release of the Flood. The atmosphere in the facility and also in the swamp is just perfect. The Covenant, of course, are incredible to fight in Combat Evolve, but also the Flood in CE were hands down the best Flood in the entire franchise to fight, so them being a new enemy for the level was just an added bonus. This really is how you introduce a new enemy, and it was the first taste of the horror atmosphere that Halo had through the trilogy that we haven't really had since and that I miss so much. The level, of course, also introduced 343 Guilty Spark, an incredibly iconic character at this point. It goes without saying, but this is hands down one of the best levels in the entire franchise and is a fantastic one to start off with straight into s plus tier next up we have hang on let me just consult my uh, other screen real quick we have alliance from halo 5 sorry i had to check what that was um alliance if i remember rightly was one of the weapons down missions in halo 5 uh so you don't fight any enemies in this it, it was the first one i think on sang helios and the weapon down missions i wasn't really a fan of them they were a cool idea but I don't know, there wasn't really much to do in them. However, the Sanghelios one, I didn't mind it. I thought it was cool getting to explore a Sanghili camp, seeing the elites interacting with the wounded, which is obviously something that traditionally elites didn't do. They didn't have hospitals. Uh, seeing the elite and the grunt on the side of the cliff talking about loads of stuff was really cool. Seeing Tanaka fixing a banshee with an elite was pretty cool. So as far as the weapons down mission goes, I think this is definitely one of the best ones, but... I'm going to be honest, it's going to go into D tier because it's not really that great. Comparing it to other levels, it's like, I mean, come on. I think we can kind of all agree on that. Next up, another absolute banger, Arbiter. Straight into S plus tier. The introduction of what I would argue is the best character in the entire Halo franchise that absolutely needs to return at some point soon in the games. Not in the book, of course, in the games. Um, but the Arbiter in general, I love. Um, of course, it not only introduced the Arbiter as a character and gave him a fantastic introduction cutscene of him getting his armor and assuming the role of the Arbiter, but it also introduced the heretics as well that I love, not only narratively, but also aesthetically as well. The aesthetic of the heretics of the Grints and of of the elites as well was so cool and unique and really unlike anything i've ever seen in like any other game including halo before i also absolutely adore the aesthetic of the gas mine that you go to on threshold there's something about its very mysterious aesthetic and of course later the secret that we find buried within it that just hits all the right notes for me and the overall narrative of the level as well just fits in perfectly with it going to slay the heretics that you would later find out were actually right all along and that killing them was in fact a mistake. Fantastic, incredible level with superb characters, one of the best intro cutscenes in the, in fact, quite possibly the best intro cutscene rather, in the entire franchise. Just incredible. You are the Arbiter, the will of the Prophets, but these are my elites. Their lives matter to me, yours does not. That makes two of us. Hmm. Huh, next up, another banger, the Ark. The Ark is also going to go into S plus tier. The Ark is one of Halo 3's seminal levels, I think. It features all the wide variety of Halo gameplay that we know and love. It's got fantastic infantry sections against Covenant. It's got fantastic regular and larger vehicle sections. <laughs> It 
it's got a scarab fight, and it finally concludes with one of the coolest, like, unique scenarios in the entire franchise. The brute chieftain that makes his brute stand down and challenges you to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Such a cool little detail that really rounds off a fantastic level perfectly. Fight me! I'm a hero! <laughs> It's also got some fantastic soundtrack pieces in it as well. The moment when the dawn comes in as well and blows everything away is so, so memorable. The arc is hands down one of the levels in Halo that highlights just how fantastic and also dynamic its gameplay is. Group ships, staggered line, shipmaster, they outnumber us three to one. Then it is an even fight. All cruisers fire at will. Burn their mongrel hide. Next up, the Armory. Um, I mean, it's a cool level, but I mean, I can't really rank it any higher than C tier because nothing really happens. <laughs> My ass! The tram ride with Johnson getting to see Earth in Halo for the first time was pretty cool. And of course, Sergeant Guns was a chad as well, right? But, I mean, nothing really happens in this. It's just your typical Halo look at the green dots thing, which, don't get me wrong, I love. But compared to the other levels in the franchise, I can't rank it very high. Next up, we have Arrival from Halo 3, which is yet another fantastic introduction cutscene that introduces the story of Halo 3 and carries on from Halo 2 pretty damn well. Not gonna lie, the gap in between Halo 2 and Halo 3 can be a bit jarring sometimes, but Arrival did its best to kind of sum up what happened at the end of Halo 2 and carry into Halo 3. It's also fantastic seeing Chief and the Arbiter interact for the first time like they do, or rather for the first time as allies as they do. It's great seeing that interaction, but like I said with Armory, I can't really rank it any higher than C tier as well. It's gonna go higher than the Armory if I can move it there. There we go. But uh, I can't rank it particularly high because there are so many levels that just do so much better. Such as one of my favorite Halo levels of all time, Assault on the Control Room, which for me is going to go... I'm going to put it <clears throat> just a bit lower in S plus tier than 343 Guilty Spark. Assault on the Control Room is kind of like the arc in a sense that it puts on display the true dynamicness of Halo's gameplay, how it's fantastic not only on foot, but also in light and heavy vehicles as well. But you know what? A sort of the control room gets an extra plus from me because it's a snow level. And snow levels are my absolute Achilles heel. I love them and they were one of the biggest things that I thought was missing from Infinite. A sort of the control room is in such a comfy snowy valley that I just, every time I play it, love to just take some time to explore. And then also, as repetitive as they can be sometimes, the inner rooms and the cliff faces as well are really cool. I love how they all adopt that kind of circular shape. And they all have the exact same shape, but with some variations in the middle that make you fight through them differently. In particular, on Legendary, not so much on Normal or Heroic, but definitely on Legendary. Honestly, even more than Silent Cartographer for me, I think, Assault in the Control Room feels like one of those fantastic exploration Halo levels. Even though it's mostly linear, I just love the feeling of exploring that Halo snowy valley. It's so comfy, and I love it every time. I must have played that mission. God, 600 times maybe since I first played Halo 1 and the novelty of it has never worn off for me. I adore Assault on the Control Room. And of course, the final cutscene is just the cherry on top as well, especially when you consider what it leads into. So Assault on the Control Room is firmly S plus tier, one of the best Halo levels of all time. Okay, time for a quick break from the ranking to talk about today's sponsor. GMG Performance. Now, as you can tell by the length of this video, I spend a lot of time staring at a screen. Hell, we all do, whether we're working or gaming or hell, even working out. I mean, the treadmill that I use even has a screen for Netflix for God's sake, which means that our eyes are exposed to large quantities of harmful blue light, causing eye strain, headaches and issues sleeping, which are all issues that I've suffered with in the past. And this is where GMG Performance come in. Their eyeglasses act as a shield against blue light, not just alleviating those symptoms, but also improving concentration and maintaining long-term vision quality. Now, GMG a while back sent me their optimizer model that I'm wearing right now to try out. They also sent me their Arenos model as well, but the optimizers are definitely my favorites. They suit me, I think, a little bit better. Uh, I've been wearing them for quite a while now, as I'm pretty sure you know by now. Uh, they've helped me out a ton during either very long editing stints or also very long RuneScape grind stints as well. And for only 48 hours following the release of this video, you can get a huge 40% discount, almost half off the entire price of a pair by using my link, which is down below in the description. But hurry, those 48 hours will only last, well, 48 hours. So make sure you check out the link in the description. 
Next up, a Halo 5 mission, the Battle of Sinaion. Gonna surprise you a little bit, but I'm gonna put this right at the top of A tier. Battle of Sinaion, I thought was actually a really cool level, even though the narrative aspect of it was a little bit shaky with finally ending the Covenant, even though it was a Covenant Remnant and there's always going to be Covenant Remnants, you can never truly end the Covenant, but it was a cool end to Jilam Dharma's Covenant, I think, and honestly, I really like the aesthetic and the visual design of Sunion being this water town. It's very cool, very cool design. And of course, finally getting to fight alongside the Arbiter again after, at that point, what, eight years it had been, I think, was so, so nice, even though he was not present as much. He was still there. And it was really cool fighting alongside him. Gameplay wise, I'm not a fan of Halo 5's gameplay, so it doesn't really do much for me. And the objectives are a little bit repetitive, just taking out those guns. But overall, I enjoyed it. I like the underlevel section where you fight the hunters and you can knock them into the water. That was pretty fun. Uh, but I think out of all of Halo 5's levels, Battle of Sinaion was probably the second best. You'll see what my favorite was in a minute. And then we have another Weapon is Down mission before the Storm, which is the one before Battle of Sinaion, ironically. I guess this goes a little bit higher than Arrival, because I think in this one, the Arbit is present. And actually, from what I remember, I always remember really liking the, the colour of the sunset on this level for some reason. Uh, and it's cool seeing all the, like, Arbiter ships in the sky as well. So I'm going to put it in D tier, because I, I can't really rank these any higher than D tier, but it's going to go at the top of D tier. Now, as I said a second ago, Battle of Sinaion is probably my second favourite Halo 5 level. My favourite is Blue Team, which is our next level, which is going to go into S tier. I think that this is quite possibly the one or one of two with Battle of Sinaion, genuinely excellent levels in Halo 5. The theming of Blue Team being this creepy Oni research ship with this mysterious bio agent on it that had taken over its crew and killed them all was such a cool theming for a level. I really wish we got more of that. It also fed into a lot of the marketing for Halo 5 as well with Oni being these shady individuals that were constantly pushing the boundaries and trying to get away with really unethical things. It really fit into that theming that we all wished Halo 5 had more of. It was also great getting to fight alongside Blue Team for the first time as well. And I'm not gonna lie, one of the coolest little like custom events, that's definitely not the right way to phrase it, but cool little unique moments in this level is the introduction of Halo 5's Hunters. Now, I've said before in videos that I really didn't enjoy fighting them and I absolutely don't. However, the way they introduced them in this in this level was nothing short of masterful. The slow tease of them as you're going through those dark hallways, almost giving the Hunters a horror vibe to them, which canonically they technically should have compared to the previous games and then their final introduction where you get to see the let golo coming together to form them and then they start smashing on the windows was such a good introduction what an incredible way to introduce a regular enemy as with all of halo 5's levels the gameplay is kind of meh because i don't really enjoy halo 5's gameplay but it goes into s tier purely because of how good the narrative and theming of this level was just absolutely incredible i really wish halo 5 had more of this the breaking Straight into D tier, probably my least favorite Halo level of all time. It's very, very repetitive, monochromatic rooms with my least enjoyable enemies in the entire franchise, the Halo 5 Promethean is to fight, uh, capped off with a triple warden fight. <sighs> Granted, it has a few cool music tracks in it, like Dominion, for example, and some really good dialogue from Chief and Cortana, but other than that, I just don't enjoy this level at all. Um, I, I just straight into D tier, don't enjoy it. Cairo Station. Cairo Station, uh, I'm going to put into A tier. I think it's a great first level for Halo 2. It's very, very linear, but defending a Mac facility from the Covenant while you watch through the windows as all the other ones get detonated is kind of a cool atmosphere, quite honestly. And of course, the final cutscene of this is quite possibly the most iconic Halo cutscene of all time, I would honestly say. Giving the Covenant back their bomb is nothing short of iconic, I'm gonna say. It is absolutely iconic. So that alone bums it up a tier. Uh, so yeah, I think it was great. I think the way they introduced the drones in this as well was quite cool. Uh, and fighting the jetpack elites in space was pretty cool as well. Uh, overall, a great way to kick off Halo 2. Next up, Coastal Highway, the final level of ODST. Also going into A tier. I love Coastal Highway. Granted, it's pretty linear and it's not exactly the most interesting level layout. I love the fact that you're driving down this highway just destroying everything in your path with Virgil, an engineer, driving a shielded Oni elephant alongside you. That's such a cool atmosphere. 
but also the annual challenge on it as well i have so many fun memories of doing that when odst first released so it gets a point just for that alone and then the final hold off section at the end although a little bit mundane i do enjoy quite honestly holding off at the zoo whilst you wait for the phantom to come in to pick you up is always great and the final cutscene there's just something about the way that book says this what can i say it was a hell of a night Just every time, it still to this day, gives me this massive cheesy smile and every time I see it, I'm like, oh man, this is why I love ODST. So for that alone, it's getting S tier. And as I say that, I realize I put it in A tier, so I'm gonna bump it up to S tier. Next up, we have our first level from Halo Infinite, Command Spire. And this one's gonna go into B tier, I think. It was nothing too special. Uh, it was a mainly Sentinel mission, which granted for me is a big deal because you guys know that I love fighting the Sentinels. Uh, and I did really enjoy the aesthetic inside the Command Spire as well with those really cool pillars that are going towards reforming the Silent Auditorium, passing through those cool like orange energy layers. That, that was really cool. Uh, and I also, of course, absolutely love the adjutant resolution boss fight at the end, the second phase of it. I thought that was great, but out of all of Infinite's levels, it wasn't anything too special, I don't think. I enjoyed it, but it didn't really make too much of a mark on me. Next up, Composer, the penultimate level of Halo 4. This level I really, really like. This is going to go at the top of A tier. This level had so many of those cool little unique moments, like the jackal at the start that jumps on that scientist and just tears him apart. So many cool little things like that that I really enjoy. The theming of it as well, it's got a great sense of desperation throughout the entire level. And of course, that really iconic scene where the composer fires and composes every human on the facility, leaving just you and Cortana is really sombering, really depressing, but I enjoy it in a very weird and very wrong way. I think the Mantis section gets boring the longer you get into it, but one section that I did really like was fighting the hunters in that science room. When you go in there and you see all the artifacts that are in the tubes, and all these scientists just cowering from these hunters that are like three times their size, just absolute hawking masses of worms, destroying them, that's again a very cool atmosphere to build. And like I said, in that room, those artifacts, seeing things like an index and the eye of a war sphinx, very very cool. Conservatory from Halo Infinite. This is also going to go into B tier, but higher than Command Spire. I enjoyed this level. Of course, it's the introduction of the Harbinger and the Endless as a faction. It's also the introduction of the Skimmers as well. And I did like that section where you fight them and Cortana, or rather the weapon, is calling them flying octopus monkeys or something. That was quite cool. Uh, one thing I really enjoyed about this level as well, in particular, the first time that I played it was when I got to that room. First thing I tried to do was go to the top of that really, really, really really tall shaft and I was like nah there's no way you'll be able to do this there'll be invisible barriers everywhere and there weren't you literally could get to the top of it which I thought was fantastic uh, overall it's a pretty standard mission again you just go through a foreigner facility killing banished um, the foreigner facility looks fantastic and in particular the descent to it is really cool I love going down that tunnel that the what I'm assuming was meant to be a scarab, but was just like an excavation beam made. That was really cool. Uh, and the hallways look fantastic. We also get the introduction of Despondent Pyre and also her death as well. But overall, just a kind of standard level in Infinite, really. Nothing too fantastic, but an enjoyable one nonetheless. Next up, Cortana from Halo 3. B tier for that one. I don't think Cortana is anywhere near as bad as people say it is. Even on Legendary, to be quite honest with you, I don't think it's anywhere near as bad. And I love the atmosphere and theming of it, but... I do find it to be quite repetitive. Uh, the one thing that would make this level so much more enjoyable for me would be if Halo 3's foam thrower wasn't trash. If Halo 3's foam thrower was actually good and didn't get you killed more than it killed the enemy, I would love this mission so much more. The thought of just going through a high, burning the entire thing, sounds so fun. So yeah, great level with great theming, but just a little bit too repetitive and monotonous for me. Next up, we have The Covenant, which I'm gonna be honest, the best Halo level of all time, full stop. Like I was saying earlier, there are some levels like Assault in the Control Room and The Ark that show off how dynamic Halo's gameplay is, but none of them do it as well as The Covenant. It's like the perfect example of why Halo's gameplay on foot, in light vehicles, heavier vehicles, air vehicles, is so perfect. It's got fantastic theming as well. It's this massive last hurrah to finally put an end to truth in The Covenant and to stop the rings from being fired and the rest of the galaxy from being destroyed. But then of course, halfway through, the Flood joined the fight as well to make it even messier than it already is. 
Then you've got the Scarab fight, the dual Scarab fight rather, with the entire build up to it, with the Halo theme playing, and then when they come down, it's just such a massive event. That entire run up to the Citadel is pretty much flawless to me. Like, I have so much fun playing that entire scenario still to this day, and the Scarab fight, the dual Scarab fight is just the cherry on top. It also has some of the most iconic cutscenes and moments in the entire franchise as well. I mean, for the love of God, the Flood becoming allies, that, the first time that happened, I remember being just mind blown and to be honest to a degree i still am when i play this that first cutscene where the tanks guide chief and arbiter is so so unique there is literally nothing like that in the rest of the franchise and there more than likely never will be and then of course on the same note as cutscenes we've got truth death the most iconic cutscene in the entirety of halo 3 easily the arbiter finally getting his revenge on truth putting his blade through truth's back is so satisfying to watch and then it just tops off with a back-to-back -back moment. I mean, that cutscene alone is perfect. And then when you get to the end of the bridge as well, you get an even better cutscene, or oh, about on par with it, honestly, where Spark reveals installation 04B slash 08, whatever you want to call it. And the cinematography combined with the music in this scene, the whole presentation and reveal of the ring is absolutely masterful. They could not have done it any better. This is just perfect absolutely perfect this level is perfect all throughout it's the perfect length perfect kind of enemies perfect number of infantry combat sections and vehicle combat sections and air vehicle combat sections just perfect through and through this level is the one level that you show to somebody to get them into halo i guarantee if you want to do that you get them to play the covenant and if they aren't hooked after that then chances are they're never going to be hooked Next up, Crow's Nest from Halo 3. This is going to go into B tier as well, uh, but higher than all the rest. Crow's Nest is a great level, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it stands out too much. One detail that I do absolutely love about it though, and it's something that I wish Halo would do more nowadays, is the fact that the base the UNSC are using as their main base on Earth against the Covenant, or at least in Africa, is a World War II base. Like, I love how the story of Halo, 500 years in the future, links back to something that is even before our time now. I love that. It grounds the universe so much, even though you're fighting aliens with energy swords and plasma weapons, it just, it still makes sure that it's grounded to a degree. It's believable that this, that this could occur in our galaxy at some point. Next up, Data Hive from ODST, which is going to go for me into A tier. I love Data Hive. The combat's decent against the drones and everything, and going through a drone hive was really cool, but the main reason that I love it is its cutscenes. In particular, Dare's dialogue. Trisha Helfer has some of the best delivery, in my opinion, in the entire franchise in the cutscene where Virgil is revealed. If I'm right, this one has taken the superintendent's data and combined it with its own. Everything we want to know about the Covenant, what they're looking for under the city, is right in here. The way she talks about him is this like kind of soft and weak, but at the same time, incredibly important asset that could literally win them the war. The, the delivery of her lines is just so good. It hits me every single time and just makes me love Virgil even more. What's wrong with you, Virgil? You trying to get me killed? Warning, hitchhikers may be escaped convicts. Dawn from Halo 4, the first mission, is going to go into B tier. Dawn's good, it works, it's, again, I don't think it's really anything special. Uh, I really don't like that, that quick time event where you punch the Elite and throw them down the elevator shaft. It's so cliche and it's, I'm not going to lie, it's very 2012 first person shooter. It's, I thought at the time it was bad, but now it's aged terribly. Um, the reveal of the Covenant when the doors on the dawn or the windows open on the dawn is very cool, along with the re reveal of Requiem as well. That's a very cool bit of imagery. Or we might be stumbled into an entire Covenant fleet. And the fact that it kind of mimics Cairo Station and Pillar of Autumn with, the, I think they're called ticks, coming onto the side of the ship and letting the Covenant in is cool. But overall, it's kind of like a meh mission. It's nothing too special, but it does start Halo 4's story off well. Delta Halo, straight into the top of A tier. Another one of those levels with really dynamic combat. You've got light infantry, you've got light vehicles, heavy vehicles. Fantastic level, but for me, the main selling points of Delta Halo are the music pieces used, 
and the architecture design. I absolutely love Halo 2's stone foreign architecture and how it deviates from the typical metal, chrome, silver, kind of ancient, dusty, grey metal facilities. It's such a nice change of pace and it gives off a completely different vibe to the rest of the foreigners. It still feels completely foreigner, but at the same time, completely different to everything that we've seen before. It's also one of the most fun levels to break out of and explore as well, which it technically shouldn't get a point for, but it's definitely getting a point for that. I love Delta Halo, it's one of my favourite Halo 2 levels, and back in the day, it was the level that I think, alongside Uprising, I replayed the most, and for good reason. Next up, Enemy Lines from Halo 5, and I'm gonna be honest, I can barely remember this, it's gonna go into C tier. It's the one with the Kraken, that's all I remember, and the Kraken was such a massive letdown. We've been wanting a Scarab fight again since Halo 3, and we'd never had one, and when 343 started teasing the Scarab in Halo 5's marketing, everyone was like, oh my god, it's gonna be the next Scarab. But it kind of just ended up being an even lamer version of Halo 2's Scarab. It just kind of stands there, and you jump on it from the Phaeton, shoot the core and jump out. It's very, very, very mid. Nowhere near as fun as the Scarabs, uh, and that's definitely the level selling point, I think. That's the most unique thing about it. Other than that, you just kind of kill Covenant. It's just standard procedure. Next up, we have Halo 3 ODST's Epilogue, which is going to go into B tier around there, I'd say. It's obviously not a playable level, so I can't rank it too high, but I still love this level slash cutscene. I mean, who can not love Virgil lighting Johnson's cigar? I mean, that alone just is a massive dub for this cutscene in my book. And then it's technically part of this, the legendary ending of ODST, seeing Truth actually finding the, the arc beneath Mombasa is very, very cool as well. That's a nice little like cherry on top of the cake that is ODST. The delicious, succulent, beautiful, iconic cake that is ODST. Next up, the epilogue from Halo 4. When I say we're doing all the levels, I meant them, including the non-playable ones. Epilogue for me is going to go into A tier. I love the didact speech at the end and what the speech overlays. Seeing Chief talking to Lasky after losing Cortana is such a great bit of humanization for the Chief, and also for Lasky as well, in fact, and it really helped develop the two's kind of relationship more that I still want us to get more of in Halo Infinite at some point. And of course, it was the first time that we saw Chief's eyes as well, which back in the day was a huge, huge deal. Next up, Evacuation from Halo 5, C tier, I guess. Uh, it's the one where you drive off Meridian, you go up Massive Elevator. It's kind of all I remember, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think it's the one where you fight the Warden. I think it's the one before, but this was kind of a just meh, forgettable level. Doesn't do anything for me. I'm not going to say it's bad by any means, but it's also not good. Next up, Excavation Site from Halo Infinite. And this is also going to go into B tier. Uh, I had some real trouble with this the first time that I did it on normal, believe it or not. Um, I found it really difficult for some reason because of the shade turrets. But overall, I enjoyed this level, I guess. Remember in Infinite, they're not really levels technically, they're just playable sections, but they're classed as levels, so we're going to talk about them. Uh, the highlight though is easily fighting Bassus. Bassus was a very cool, very memeable brute chieftain boss fight that I enjoyed fighting. It was cool fighting an older brute for once instead of like a, a regular one. You could tell that he was kind of battle scarred and aged. But other than that, it's a pretty simple mission. You just got to shoot four pylons and then go inside the gun and turn it off. Pretty simple. Next up, Exodus from Reach, and this is going to go into A tier. Although I really don't enjoy Reach's vanilla gameplay, I think the theming and narrative of all, all of its levels were fantastic, and Exodus was a great example of this. The first level, where you're actually on your own with no members of Noble Team, that's opened with that incredible shot of the carrier just destroyed in the hills, beautiful cinematography. Uh, I also love the cutscenes in this as well, and the whole Saving Civilians theme kind of really grounds the experience and make you realize that even though you are a, like one ton billion dollar super soldier, you've still got to protect the little guys. You've still got to protect the civilians, the ones that can't fight back, and this level put that forward perfectly. Welcome to the Bullfrogs. Floodgate from Halo 3. This is going into S tier absolutely incredible atmosphere. Honestly, I'm a sucker for backtracking levels. I love levels where you go back through the previous level, but there are certain things changed to make it feel different, and Floodgate is the fantastic epitome of that. I also absolutely adore the introduction cutscene of The Shadow of Intent. What an incredible cutscene. Hail humans and take heed. This is the carrier, Shadow of Intent. Clear this sector while we deal with the flood. And fighting alongside elites for the first time as chief is just incredible. My brothers, I fear you bring bad news. My territory has fallen. Become a fretted hive. The fleet has quarantined with broken. 
the single ship broke through our line, and we gave chase. We had a fleet of hundreds. Alas, brother, the flood, it has evolved. Next up, Forerunner from Halo 4, and this is going to go at the bottom no, actually, top of C tier. Forerunner, I do like at the start when you're in the center of Requiem and you can see the all the portals and stuff. I think that, that shot is really, really cool, but the actual gameplay and narrative of the level is really repetitive. It's just a go do three things level, pretty much. The only highlight of the level for me is at the end when you finally awaken the Didact and his introduction cutscene, which I absolutely love. And then I do like the ghost escape as well, but broadly speaking, it's kind of meh, at least from a gameplay standpoint. Foundations from Infinite. This is going to go into B tier as well. I like Foundations quite a lot. Um, fighting in these really cool foreigner hallways that in some areas look really familiar and in other parts look very new but also to a degree familiar as well because they use obviously older art style foreigner stuff was really really nice. One of my favorite elements of this level was seeing all the Silexers. I screamed the first time I saw those when I first played Infinite. Seeing something from like Origins and Halo Legends in a game? was wild. That's so cool. And of course, how could I forget the flood easter egg? That just alone gives it points for me. What a great easter egg that was. Tremonius rounding it off as the boss fight was kind of alright, but when you get through the game, you realise that Tremonius was literally just a jump pack brute. Like, he was nothing special. Genesis from Halo 5. This is going to go into C tier near the top. The only reason I rank it higher than D tier is because of how cool the intro was. The intro section where you run down the spine of the Guardian is absolutely fantastic. It was when it released, and it still is now, quite honestly. Honestly, but the rest of the mission is kind of just a bit meh, not not very memorable, a bit forgettable. Exuberant Witness pops up, which is alright, I guess, but other than that, pretty forgettable. Next up, we have um, Glast, which is one of the Meridian levels, but neither of them left a mark on me at all, so I'm just going to go for C tier, bottom of C tier. I can't really remember which one this was. I think it's the first one when you got a Meridian. Um, and you first fight the soldiers on there as well, I think. You fight that sniper soldier up the hill. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's all right. It's okay, I guess, but not great. Gravemind, fantastic level. Straight to the top of S tier. I love Gravemind. Is it absurdly difficult on Legendary? Yes. However, it's so fun. Seeing the Covenant fall apart and start a civil war literally right before your eyes is so cool. Most games would have that happen in a cutscene or off screen. You literally see it happen right in front of you. The race through high charity to get to truth before it takes off is fantastic. It always feels really tense, but also really fun at the same time. And of course, blow me away. Blow me away in that final section. Absolutely inc I love it so much. I always still to this day do sit back and just watch the brutes and the elites fight each other in that final room whilst blow me away, please. I found that song in, of course, 2004 because of Halo 2 and it's still in my gym playlist to this very day. So that goes to show how much I love it. And Gravemind, I mean, like I said, the theming of it is fantastic. Seeing the Covenant fall apart before your eyes is great. And it rounds out with a fantastic cutscene as well. Great journey. I love this level from Halo 2, probably the most underrated level in the entire game. So it's going to go into A tier at the top. The Tartarus fight is really good. It's definitely the best one in Halo 2, but my favorite moment is going through that door for the first time and seeing the elite pop up with hunters. And he's like, Arbiter, the hunters have come to our aid. They will fight by our side. The Arbiter? I thought he was dead. Hold your fire. The hunters have come to our aid, Arbiter. They will fight by our side. That still to this moment gives me chills, and every time I get into that prison room, I always, always to this day release the hunters first and just watch them go wild in the boots in there. Oh, and also fighting alongside Johnson, who's in a goddamn scarab, never, ever, ever gets old. Guardians from Halo 5, again, C tier. Uh, I kind of like the idea, actually, of the open area at the end where you have to go and destroy five things, I forgot what they're called, but you can do them in any order. That was that was a cool idea, um, but the gameplay in Halo 5 just lets all the levels down for me. The level really is just two areas, that open area and then the final survival area where you just go around the gravel lifts, which again was uh, decent, I guess. Um, one thing I do actually really like about this level is that little prison at the start where there's like elites, there's hunters, there's knights, there's crawlers. That was, that was a very cool little touch at the start. I like that, but broadly speaking, Guardians was kind of like a meh mission. But what wasn't a meh final mission was Halo from Halo 3. 
firmly into S plus tier. It could have done with the Covenant, I think. I would have liked it if there were some like stray Covenant to fight in the level, which is why it's not the top of S plus tier. But that said, I love fighting Halo 3's Flood. I think they're really satisfying. And the Warthog run is just so, so damn good in that level. It's so replayable as well, because based on what difficulty you play it on and how many people you've got, you can use different vehicles. There's the Warthog, there's Choppers, there's a Mongoose, there's Ghosts if you want to do Annual. Sorry. Just so much replayability in that final section alone. And also, even though the boss fight, not really a boss fight, isn't that great, I'm still happy that we were the ones to take down Guilty Spark, especially after what he did to Johnson. Kick his ass. If that had been done in a cutscene, it would have felt far less impactful. I also adore the cinematography, both in the control room and also at the end as the halo fires and tears itself apart. Just masterful. Where are you going? Wait, what's that? And then we have Halo from Halo 1. This is going to go into A tier around there. I am actually not as big of a fan of Halo from Halo 1 as other people. I kind of wish there was a bit more to do in the open areas, but that said, I still absolutely love just driving a warthog around those really comfy Pacific Northwest fields. They're so nice, the ravines, the streams, the cliff sides, the waterfalls, just this level wins purely on its aesthetic and its atmosphere of the natural world. <laughs> I think if I was going to improve it, I would have had quite a few more like underground sections and tunnel sections like the one where you rescue those marines. I would have liked more like that, but uh, I do love this level overall, don't get me wrong. The beam towers are beyond iconic, they're a staple of the franchise at this point, and this was our first introduction to them. Heretic from Halo 2. What a fantastic way to begin the campaign. Heretic goes into S tier. Getting to see the inner workings of the Covenant for the first time just completely flipped the switch and forever altered Halo as a franchise. If it weren't for this cutscene, Halo's story would be nowhere near as deep as it is now. Tell that to the Covenant. High Charity. This is also going into A tier around here. High Charity, although it's very short and sweet and doesn't have the most in terms of gameplay variety, it wins for me in terms of its atmosphere. The atmosphere and theming of a High Charity that is being so rapidly overrun by the Flood, with some of its sections completely losing power and falling into total darkness, shrouded in that thick Flood fog, it's so memorable. I also love hearing the Gravemind talk over the comms as well, in response to the stuff that Truth is saying over the comms. Whosoever is lit by fear, take heed. I am the Noble mercy is here on my side. Take wise counsel here in my ears. This together Such great atmosphere building, what it kind of loses in gameplay, it absolutely makes what it makes up for in narrative and atmosphere. Parasite did not defeat the Forerunners, and it shall not defeat us. There is a creature. Your deaths will be instantaneous, while we shall suffer the progress of infinity. House of Reckoning, S tier. This is a fantastic mission. It's a little bit repetitive, don't get me wrong. However, the rooms where you have to hold off, the, the like banished UNSC training facilities, where you have to hold off as like one of the torture victims in them against waves of banished are so, so cool. I will never, as long as I live, forget the smile that I had on my face when I first played this level. What a fantastic level. It was such a shock when I went in there and saw that. Like, I, of all the things I expected when I went inside the House of Reckoning, that was at the absolute bottom of my list. It wasn't even on my list. And then, of course, at the end, we've got Jaeger's boss fight, which I do think has gotten very easy. However, the theming of it and the atmosphere is still absolutely on point. I love that fight. Followed up by Eshrim's fight that I don't think is as good, but still pretty enjoyable. Infinity from Halo 4. Infinity is going to go into A tier at the bottom. I really like Infinity in Halo 4, quite honestly. The build-up to actually finding the Infinity and meeting humans for the first time, at least for the first time for Chief in 
what, four years, five years is really, really cool. And I just find that the jungle sections in particular, the way that they present the Promethean specifically, has just such a great atmosphere. This one section here, with the really thick fog that forces you to use Promethean vision to reveal all the Prometheans, is really, really cool. And I kind of wish Halo 4 had done more of that. Making Promethean vision actually useful in the campaign like this would have been a really great touch that I think would have helped to build the atmosphere. Also, the music that plays during the tank run, especially at the start of it, where Cortana's like, show this spot and it's how it's done, Chief, always sends chills down my spine. This is Pelican 595. We have the Chief on board and are outbound for Rally Point Alpha Sierra Foxtrot. Weapons free, Chief. Let him have it! We're good to go, Chief. Show these Spartans how it's done. Every time, it did in 2012, and it still does today. I really like Infinity, and of course, how could I forget as well, the Mantis section at the end, with the Mantis theme playing, is really damn good as well. Keys from Halo CE. This is gonna go into, I'd say, top of B tier. I really like Keys, but it's a little bit too short for my tease. I would have liked to have gone around more of the Truth and Reconciliation, now that it was over and with Flood. Um, although I did really like going through the canyon again, but this time with it flooded with coolant. That coolant has always looked so satisfying to me, ever since I first played Halo 1. Don't ask why, that's a very strange thing to say, but yeah, overall, I like keys. Um, of course, it has the iconic punching keys in the head cut scene uh, that will never get old of what to watch, for sure, for better or worse. Uh, it was a good end to his character. It's also a very horrific way to send his character out, now that I think about it. I kind of wish I could remember what I first felt when I did that, when I first played Halo 1, because punching the captain's head in like that was not how I expected him to go out. Oh yeah, it's also the first time that we fight the Spec Ops Covenant in Halo 1 as well that I absolutely love. Kikawani Station. This is going to go into B tier as well, around the top. Uh, I like Kikawani Station. It's a cool, like, specifically Banshee level, which uh, Halo's never really had before. It's kind of the only one, now that I think about it, which is cool. But the Scarab fight was kind of meh, because it wasn't dynamic at all like Halo 3's were. Um, and there's nothing else, really, besides the Marty Easter Egg. How could I forget? The, the Dancing Marty Easter Egg. I could never forget that. Kazingo Boulevard. This is going to go into A tier... Yeah, around the middle-ish. I like Kazingo Boulevard a lot because it's like the only urban scorpion level that we've ever had in Halo. Like, taking a scorpion through a level is one thing, but taking a scorpion through a human city is a complete whole different thing. It really has this urban warfare vibe to it that I really enjoy. The Library. This will be an interesting one. A tier. I don't think the library is anywhere near as bad as people make it out to be. Even on Legendary, even with the Rocket Flood, which by now you've seen aren't that bad unless you go through a level with about 500 of them. I do enjoy the library, quite honestly. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely saved by how fun Halo 1's Flood are to fight. Um, it's definitely repetitive, but I like to think that it's kind of like a physical torture test with the Flood and also a psychological torture test with how repetitive and monotonous the environment is. I really don't mind playing the library, quite honestly. I get why some people don't like it, but personally, I do quite enjoy it. Lone Wolf, the only level from Reach that is going to be going firmly, firmly into S plus tier around there. Lone Wolf, I will never forget the first time I finished Reach and I saw like the credits roll and everything. I was like, ah, that was really good. I enjoyed that. I guess Noble Six died. And then this rolls and I was like, what? Hang on, what's this? This was the absolute perfect way to round out Reach's story. Bungie could not have ended it any more perfectly than this. All those feelings of desperation and survival that were in the campaign just come to a head in this level. This is the ultimate test of your abilities and it's the ultimate sacrifice that Noble Six has to make to make sure that the Pillar of Autumn gets off and of course the rest of Halo happens and the Covenant ultimately get defeated. What a fantastic way to not only send out Reach's story and Reach as a planet, but also Noble Six as a character, as your character. What a fantastic way to do it. Long Night of Solace. This is going to go into B tier right at the top. 
The space section of Long Night of Solace is pretty damn good, honestly. Um, I wouldn't say it's amazing. I think the space combat could have been better. It does get a little bit repetitive towards the end, but I like the almost Battlefront 2-esque, like, frigate attack that you have to do. Um, the intro section on the beach is kind of meh. The theming is good, but the gameplay, like all of it with Reach for me, just doesn't really do much. Uh, although I will say, boarding the ship at the end and having to say goodbye to George in the way that you do, uh, that is kind of heartbreaking still. That still hits. Seeing UNSC ship getting torn apart through the windows of the ship that you're actually on and then at the end when you think that George has made the ultimate sacrifice to save Reach and you think that you've basically won the battle now hearing slip space rupture detected like 17 times by Auntie Dart it just it hits hard every damn time like I said the strength for me of Reach's missions are the theming and atmosphere and narrative and Long Night of Solace absolutely delivers on that the more. I love the more. The more is a fantastic final level and it's going towards the top of A tier. Again, backtracking on the Pillar of Autumn now that it's destroyed and taken over by not just the Flood but also the Covenant is a really, really cool change of pace and it does feel like a completely different level. The explosion effect for destroying the fusion drives is still to this day so damn satisfying. I love it. And of course, the Warthog run is just absolutely spectacular. Seeing Foe Hammer go down is always sad, but taking the Warthog through that mysterious section of the ship that makes absolutely no anatomical sense whatsoever in the broad scheme of things is so damn fun still. I love that Warthog run. Not quite as much as Halo 3's, but it's definitely on par. Hurry! Meridian Station from Halo 5. This is going to go into D tier as well, about half, eh, about there, I think. Uh, it's another one of the weapon down missions. In fact, it's the first one. I guess Governor Sloan was cool and it was cool getting to wander around like a little village of what were essentially outer colonists slash insurrectionists, but other than that, doesn't really do much for me. The objectives aren't particularly interesting and it's over rather quick. Metropolis. Metropolis is also going to go into A tier around, I'd say, there, around there. I love Metropolis. Again, like the Scorpion Bridge section is just unforgettable, uh, as is the final section with the Scarab. Although, obviously, Halo 2 Scarab isn't anywhere near as fun to fight as Halo 3's. The theming of the Scarab and seeing it just tear through the city is always so fun to watch. It really builds up to the final fight on it well. Even if the final fight on it is a little bit lackluster, you don't actually destroy it. You just kill all the Covenant on board and then somehow it starts exploding, but it's still fun nonetheless. It's also the introduction of the Gorse Hog as well, which to me is one of the like top three most satisfying vehicles of all time, in particular Halo 2 and Halo 3's version. The sound the turret makes in Halo 2 is just, oh, beautiful. And then of course, Steve Vai's Mjolnir mix. I don't think I really need to say any more, do I? Midnight is going to go into A tier, around here I'd say. Midnight is yet again another fantastic final Halo level. I love the aesthetic of the like the grey and the red on the mantle's approach. That's an aesthetic that we'd never had for the foreigners before, but I really liked how it looked. Again, it's another one of those levels with a fantastic sense of desperation to it. First off, the Broadsword Trench Run, although it is incredibly hyperlinear, I still really enjoy purely because of its theming. The music that plays in the background and that one bit of dialogue when Lassie comes over the comms. Only one got left. Oh, that will never fail to give me chills. And then once you get inside the Mantle's approach, that sense of desperation with Cortana falling apart in your head with the rush to stop the Didact from composing Earth is always so heart pounding. In particular, when you plug Cortana into the pedestal for the last time and that music plays that I, I'm not sure what track it is. It might be part of 117, I can't remember, but the track that plays towards the end of that bit where you have to go around all three pedestals, I think it's just after Cortana dies actually or gets disintegrated. That, that music, oh my god, the last one that you go to, I, I literally never die on it, because the music, it's like Doom, the music makes me feel invincible. You should insult the Didact.
I would put it into S tier. However, the fact that the Didax boss fight is hold RT to fire machine gun is just such a pathetically lame way to send out such a cool character in an otherwise really good mission. And then finally, of course, Cortana's goodbye. That cutscene is just choreographed perfectly in every way. That was a great final cutscene in the final level. Mombasa Streets, this is going to go into A tier near the top, just below Halo, which is fitting considering Halo and Silent Cartographer are really the only two levels that have done Mombasa Streets formula before in Halo. It was the first, at least the first since Halo 1, proper open world kind of level, and it didn't disappoint mostly. I found that wandering around it in the night with the rain coming down, Covenant hunting parties going around the city looking for you, was such an incredible atmosphere. This is hands down one of the best levels in the entire franchise in terms of atmosphere. And of course, once you finish the game and you've unlocked the entirety of the Mombasa Streets open world level, you can start to find the superintendent little stashes with rockets and snipers and mongooses and stuff to mess around on, which adds more replayability to it. And then of course, who can forget the phone is ringing. What if the phones rang? A great stab at a truly open world Halo experience that was so significant that not only do fans still talk about it and remember it so fondly nowadays, but it even went on to inspire an entire game in the future. New Alexandria, yet another Reach mission with absolutely incredible atmosphere going towards the top of A tier. I love New Alexandria. Again, gameplay is kind of meh for me, but the atmosphere of it going to these buildings that are being completely overrun with the Covenant in this stormy, rainy night sky to save civilians that are hiding in there is always so, so damn fun. And of course, who can forget running into Buck as well? That little Buck, like optional kind of Easter egg encounter is really, really damn cool. In fact, this level's full of Easter eggs. You've got the Covenant Club Easter egg, and then as well, the Pelican and Phantom Driver easter egg as well. I also liked how they tried to drum up a little bit of a horror atmosphere with the drones as well in that one tower. I think it worked pretty damn well honestly, it gave them this very like feral vibe that I liked. And then of course the final cutscene with the glassing occurring that you've seen off in the distance in the fantastic skybox earlier on that was now happening to you was great and it was topped off with not only Cat getting sniped, but one of the most somber Halo cutscenes of all time with absolutely immaculate cinematography. Next up, we have Nexus from Halo Infinite, and Nexus is going to go, ooh, mid to bottom of A tier. I really like Nexus, but the reason that I liked it was mostly because of its callbacks to specifically some of my favorite parts of Halo 2. Nexus as a level felt kind of like a homage to Halo 2's Delta Halo sections, in particular Sacred Icon and Quarantine Zone. When I first opened the hatch and saw that massive pipe that you jumped down, like in Sacred Icon, Oh my god, I was I wish I could have taken a picture of that smile because I was I was so so happy. And then when you get to the bottom of that really cool little homage, you then get to another one. You get to a very similar gondola section to the one on quarantine zone, albeit a little bit less tedious because it's nowhere near as long. I'm pretty sure when people three designed that, they were like, right, we like what Bungie did with that gondola, but let's not make it quite as long. Let's tighten it up a little bit. And they did, and I really enjoyed it. And then the final room where you see all the spires beneath the hologram of Zeta Halo looks so, so cool. And I love that section at the end there where you get all the little callbacks to previous games. Hearing the Pete Stacker as Captain Keys again was just something else. Good luck, Master Chief. Who was that? Captain Jacob Keys. The Pillar of Autumn was his ship. And then at the end, when it seems as though the weapon's compromised and the Chief is about to delete her, the fact that the password was Sam 034 or 034, I forget which one, it's a reference to Sam. One of the deaths that absolutely changed Chief as a Spartan and as a person. The first Spartan that he ever saw die, one of his good friends. That was such a cool callback to the Fall of Reach. What a honestly fantastic mission, even though its main basis is like homages and callbacks. I still think it handles them really tastefully. It doesn't, it definitely is fan service. I'm not going to pretend that it's not, but it doesn't feel like overt fan service. It feels like it's done in a tasteful manner, which I really appreciate. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed Nexus. <laughs> that was fun.
again? Want to do it again? Nightfall, again from Reach. Kind of meta me. Gonna go bottom of B tier-ish. Um, I love, again, the cutscenes in it and the atmosphere. Fighting the Guta was really cool. And that one section where June talks to the insurrectionists about the weapons they've got, I absolutely love. What are you doing here? Whole area is supposed to be evacuated. Didn't like leaving it to someone else to protect our home. So we came back. For this. We have them hidden all over the territory. You know, this stuff is stolen. What, you gonna arrest me? No. I'm gonna steal it back. But overall, Nightfall doesn't really do too much for me. NMPD HQ. Now, I enjoy this level overall, but the last section is why I'm gonna put it in A tier, around here. The bit at the end with, I think it's called Skylines, the electric guitar theme from ODST playing, whilst you fight off all the Banshees and Covenant that drop in, followed up by the Chieftain at the end that, granted, you do kill in a cutscene, which does suck a little bit, but it's got a bit of valid reasoning considering what he does to Romeo. That cutscene is so cool, seeing the ODSTs take down a Chieftain, because obviously we're used to taking down Chieftains single-handedly in Halo 3 as a Spartan, but now that we're ODSTs, it's not as simple as that, and this cutscene definitely demonstrates that really well, seeing Buck jump on it and then I think it's Dutch or Mickey pushes him out of the way with Buck's knife in his throat was very cool. Get this thing off of me. Noble Actual, um, they're gonna go in B tier near the top. Great way to open up Reach, not really much to say, but the way that they introduced each member of Noble Team individually back to back was really cool and really helped set up their unique character archetypes as well. Only Alpha Sight from ODST. This is gonna go into B tier, around the middle. I really like the bridge section at the start, but after that, it just kind of becomes a normal Halo level with no real standout elements to it. I do like the rooftop jump pack brute fight as well with the NMPD Pelican that comes in that looks really cool. And the final cutscene where they blow the tower is sick as well. But other than that, it doesn't really have any standout moments. It's a great level, but it's nothing too special. Only Sword Beast. This level is probably my least favorite reach level overall, to be honest with you. It's going to go at the bottom of B tier, I'd say. Um, I don't dislike it by any means, and I like the kind of rush at the top of the tower at the end of the level, but the start and middle of it are kind of meh. The Warhog section is alright, but again, nothing too special, nothing that makes it really stand out above other levels with Warthog runners in it. My favourite bit has got to be rallying it with Noble Team when you get inside the tower. I do like that moment where you're all fighting as a squad to get to a meal on the roof. That's cool, but... Other than that, and of course the fact that everyone used to use the target designator section to farm credits back in the day with commendations, other than that, it doesn't really do much for me. Oracle, this is going to go at the bottom of A tier. I absolutely love the Heretic Leader fight in this and all the Heretic Leader cutscenes. His character is severely, severely underrated and this is his level. I wondered who the prophets would send to silence me. An arbiter. I'm flattered. He's using a holodrome. He must be close. Come out so we may kill you. <laughs> Get in line. But there's too many sections where the pacing is just ground to a halt, like the elevator, for example, and then the room after the elevator, where you just stay in the same room as enemies spawn around you all the time. It's a good job that I enjoy Halo 2's gameplay a lot, because if I didn't, this level would probably be rated a bit lower. But the music in it, the theming of the, the entire lab, and the, actually as well, the reveal of the flood I really like. How you can see them fighting the heretics in the fog beneath the floor before they jump on you all fantastic. It's just it doesn't have very good pacing. That's the only issue. Osiris or Kamchatka, I forgot what it's called, the first level of Halo 5. Kind of C tier to me. Not the bottom, but like, I'd say about about there maybe. Uh, it's all right. It's okay, I guess. The only real like cool thing I can remember about it is the fact that you can have that, if you save that elite at the end that's fighting up the hill, he'll become friendly and he'll fight with you as you, as you go up the hill fighting the Prometheans. That's really cool. But other than that, doesn't really do much for me. Outpost Tremonius. Now, I'm going to put this in B tier. 
Uh, it's not exactly a massive level, you just kill a bunch of Banished on the platform to clear it for the pilot, but there are a few things that I do really like about it. Firstly, of course, the tank gun. The now iconic tank gun is really dope, the fact that that's there helps, and I also love that airstrike easter egg as well. Uh, there's also a little secret floor in a room that is very well hidden if you come out of the Banished base and go right back on yourself. It's hidden away in like a little crevice at the back of the cliffside, and there's an elite zealot in there that's camoed, that's guarding an upgraded heatwave that I... I love that kind of like hidden room easter egg kind of thing, that's great. And then of course the fact that there is the first Spartan Core um, on this level that you unlock. And when you unlock your first Spartan Core, you get an achievement called a Hidden Experience, which I'm still blown away by. That alone gives it points. Um, but yeah, our, our first from this was, it was a cool entry to like the open world, or rather it was a cool first look at Infinite's open world, because it wasn't exactly open world. Outskirts. Outskirts is going to go into A tier for me. I love urban combat in Halo and it's something that we've not had anywhere near as much of as we should have done and Outskirts does it really, really well. Fighting through the destroyed multi-pathway old town of Mombasa never ever gets old. Nor does the music in it that I use in literally every single video, I'm sure you've noticed by now. Outskirts is also one of the most replayable missions for me because of how many glitches there are on the level and how many ways there are to get out of the map and just explore the outsides of the map. I, again, as a kid and still now, I spend so much time just wandering around the rooftops of Outskirts, taking in the different areas of the map. It's a very cool level, and I also really enjoy the ghost slash warthog section at the end through the tunnel. It's a kind of unique way to do a warthog run-esque kind of section of a level. The package. I do really like the package quite a lot, purely because of its atmosphere. The ominous orange sky with the destroyed Oni facility and also the secret base have this really cool kind of like elite vibe to it. So I'm going to put the package in B tier around the middle point. I really like it. The scorpion section is good, although the areas are a little bit too narrow for the scorpion, so it tends to get destroyed quite quickly. But I really, really enjoy fighting through the sword base again, finding the secret base underneath it where Horsey is and defending it. And who can forget the Bungie tribute room easter egg? Their final thank you and goodbye to the community in the, in the form of an easter egg room that you can get into that is just filled with OG community references was a great, great touch. Pelican Down from Infinite. This is going to go into C tier. I'm sorry, like it's, I don't dislike it, but it's pretty repetitive going from like tower to tower to tower. Even though the engagements are really fun, it is very repetitive. I'd put it in B tier ordinarily, but it's weighed down by how bad the boss fight is. Hyperius and Tavaris' boss fight is a massive letdown, to be honest with you. It's a huge, absurdly large difficulty spike when you get to it, and there's not even like any cool cutscene before, during, or after it to introduce and characterize the enemies either, which sucks considering Hyperius in particular has Locke's helmet on his shoulder. We could have done with some more characterization for that, but overall I think it's an okay mission. The cutscene at the end is pretty good where Chief talks to the pilot, but other than that, kind of meh. Pillar of Autumn, the first ever Halo level, ever, ever. I'm going to stick it into A tier near the top. It's a fantastic escape mission from your ship, seeing this massive, hugely powerful human ship going down in flames as you flee it at the end is fantastic, and fighting with the marine for the first time is obviously so memorable. What the hell are you doing? It's very linear, and at times quite claustrophobic, but it kind of needs to be considering what it is. At the end of the day, you are like a seven, eight foot tall super soldier in a ship full of people that are six foot tall, so everything is going to feel a little bit claustrophobic. Prepare to drop. The first cutscene of Halo 3 ODST is going at the top of S tier. What a fantastic, incredible first cutscene. I just, I will never get, get tired and never stop getting chills from the first drop. It's just so satisfying to watch. Comfort! We are green and very, very mean! I take it back! Navy got his butt kicked! Hey, Romeo! And another great intro cutscene is Prologue from Halo 4. Prologue is going to go at the bottom of A tier. I really like Prologue. Um, it might go towards the top of A tier were it not for the attempted retcoms of all the designs uh, with the elites and the Spartans and all that. But I think thematically and narratively, it's an incredible intro cutscene and it sets up Halo 4's narrative so well. Quarantine Zone. I really like Quarantine Zone. It's going to go around mid-A tier, I'd say. Um, 
I love fighting the Sentinels so much, uh, in, in particular, the Enforcers. I also love the Artas cutscenes in this as well. The first one and the second one, both fantastic. We shall cut into the heart of this infestation, retrieve the icon, and burn any flood that stand in our way. The parasite is not to be trifled with. I hope you know what you're doing. As the first vehicle sentinel level, I think it's really, really damn good. In fact, the only vehicle sentinel level in the entire game and franchise. It's just weighed down a bit by the five minute long gondola at the end where you just don't really do anything. You just stand still waiting for the flood to jump on you. Were it not for that, I'd definitely rank it higher because the final cutscene as well is incredible. The final moment where the Arbiter realizes that Tartarus isn't just being an asshole to him, he actually does want to kill him and he wants to destroy his entire race is a completely seminal moment for the franchise and for the elites. And it's just, it's a huge turning point in the entire story of the trilogy. Reclaimer from Halo 4. The idea is really cool going on a huge version of the elephant. I love that. That was very cool, but I found the encounters pretty boring for the most part. Um, the only cool moment really for me is at the end when you actually meet Sergeant Stacker again. There's a Sergeant Stacker Easter egg. When you get out of that foreigner section and there's another tank section, uh, one of the Marines is Sergeant Stacker, which is pretty cool. So it's going to go in C tier, but at the top of C tier. Recovery from Halo Infinite. This is basically a non-mission, so I'm just going to put it at the bottom of C tier. Because the gameplay is really fun, but you just capture an FOB and then save like one group of marines and that's it. Um, it's, I guess, your introduction to the open world, but that isn't what the level is. The open world is a beast in and of itself. It's not recovery. Recovery is just like a little sample of what there is in the open world. And to be honest, half of recovery is just the weapon talking you through the map and the objective list that you can't even skip, which is really annoying on replays. Regret. I love Regret. Even though on Legendary it's basically impossible because of the Jackal Snipers, my favourite bit of Regret honestly has got to be the underwater sections. I love all those underwater ruins that you see as you go past and then the underwater facilities that you fight in. That's such a unique foreigner facility that we've not fought in at all since and I really hope at some point in Infinite DLC or whatever we do. The regular gameplay is really good. I love the environments that you fight in but of course the most staple moment of the entire level is the Regret boss fight or as Marty put it, punching an old man in a wheelchair. Um, I don't dislike the regret boss fight that much, but at the same time, it's not exactly anything too special. The bigger threat are the honor guards rather than regret himself. So I'm going to put regret in A tier, but near the top. So about there, I'd say. Next up, repository from Halo Infinite. This is going to go... At the near the top of B tier, uh, around there I'd say. Um, repository, for the most part, gameplay wise, it's just hallways. It's kind of what Infinite suffered from in its linear levels where they feel very repetitive, like very, very repetitive. And Repository was like that. Um, however, I will say I loved the destruction of Doizak cutscene. That was really cool. And we also got to see Cortana's attack on Earth and how she basically destroyed Sydney, at least, if not more, more of Australia. That was a cool moment. But I don't know, gameplay wise, it's just kind of all right, I guess. Requiem from Halo 4. Now, I love the intro area, the first area of the level when you're in that cave with all the destruction from the, the, the dawn and also the Covenant ships. The atmosphere and the colors of that room are fantastic. Uh, but I think the rest of the level is kind of meh, honestly. Um, I, I think Requiem looks decent, but it doesn't exactly give me the same feels that walking out onto Alpha Halo for the first time did. And I think the gameplay areas on it are like, all right, there's a bit of a banshee section, but that's kind of the only major area. So I'm going to put Requiem into about low B tier. What's this one called? Reunion. Oh, that's where Blue Team and Chief go to Genesis. Okay, Reunion, uh, I'll pass, thank you. Bottom of C tier. Uh, the only thing I can really remember about this is that really cool Easter egg where you punt the grunt off the side and get the skull. That's cool, but everything else about that mission is kind of like... Oh, one other thing, actually. One other thing. That cave that you spawn in, in the second half of the level, I always loved the design of that cave. I don't know why, I just found it really comfy. I love that, but other than those two things, it's pretty forgettable. 
the road. This is going to go towards the bottom of B tier, I'd say. It was cool to have like almost an entire level dedicated to just a warthog run kind of thing with a lot of choices in kind of what vehicle you could take. You could take a warthog or a chopper or a wraith or a scorpion or a mongoose or gungoose or anything like that. I like that. Um, although the fact that infinite vehicles are so damn weak made it kind of suck because at least in my experience even on normal my scorpion got destroyed so early so i just kind of found myself on foot for the rest of it however having the halo ce halo theme playing in the background was so so sick it was such an adrenaline boost and i love the bit where you run into the banished hunters for the first time as well also fantastic uh, but other than that it's a cool idea that is quite flawed because of infinite's vehicle design Sacred Icon. I like Sacred Icon quite a lot, so I'm going to put it towards the bottom of A tier. A lot of people dislike it. In fact, I see a lot of people say that it's the least favorite Halo 2 mission. Personally, I really enjoy Sacred Icon. Uh, it's quite a quiet mission, uh, very reliant on its atmosphere, I think, that's built up not just by the Sentinels and all the dead bodies of brutes that have fallen before you trying to do what you're doing, but also when you get further into the Sentinel wall by all the flood fog and the flood rooms that I love so much. It's the first time that we fight the Sentinel Enforcers, that I absolutely love and their introduction in the first cutscene is just perfect. They look so alien and horrifying. The final holdout section with Artas and the Elites is really cool as well. One little cool detail that I always love to look at that I only noticed a few years ago for the first time is that you can actually see the Sentinel factory that you go through in Quarantine Zone being shot down by the flood when you first get outside. It's a very small but very cool detail. The sequence from Halo Infinite. This is going to go with the top of C tier. Um, it was a very filler level. It was the only level in Infinite that I felt was truly filler. It wasn't bad by any means, and I liked the open world aspect of it, that you could go to any tower that you wanted in any order. That was cool, and assault them any way you wanted. As per usual with some of the Infinite campaign stuff, uh, the gameplay makes up for some of the other downfalls, but I think it's definitely filler. There's not much story content there, and it's really just a buffer to get you to the Nexus. Shutdown from Halo 4, that's going to go at the kind of top middle-ish of C tier. Flying a pelican for the first time was really sick, and I love the first section in the Infinity, but the actual combat sections, I find the areas to just look really, really ugly inside the towers. It almost looks like the lighting is not baked in in them. They're just all the exact same monochromatic grey, which I don't really enjoy. The final cutscene is cool with Chief jumping across the liches. Don't get me wrong, I like that, but overall the level was not great. Sierra 117, a fantastic first mission for Halo 3. It's going to go in A tier near the top. I'd say, in fact, top of A tier. I really like Sierra 117. Fighting through the jungles of Earth is really cool. All the little moments of the Marines, if they're like fleeing from the Covenant or that one that's been captured by the brute. Tell me its location. Kiss my ass. <laughs> or seeing Johnson getting captured and trying to fight back against that chieftain is really, really cool. And I love that moment at the end where the pelicans come through the valley and just destroy those phantoms. That's such a cool spectacle. And yeah, one of the highlights I think of this mission as well is that they managed to make a forest on Earth still feel quite alien because of the Covenant's presence. It still has that kind of alien forest vibe that we got from Delta Halo sections in Halo 2, which I really enjoy. Even though at the same time, it feels very familiar because it's on Earth. The Silent Auditorium, the final level of Halo Infinite. Now, this might shock some of you. It's going to go, I was right, I was going to do S+, plus, but I'm going to do the top of S tier. Um, because the Harbinger boss fight could have been better. The real boss was that Brute Chieftain, not the Harbinger, let's be honest. But the single thing that I love more than anything on this level is the aesthetic. When it comes to aesthetics in Halo, the Silent Auditorium is like top three for me. The gold and bronze design of the Foreigner rooms with those statues that just look so imposing. And the design of the auditorium in particular, where the Endless were punished to live out the rest of their existence in persecution, it just has this incredible aura and vibe about it that no other room, honestly, in any Halo game has ever given me. This is some of the best designed foreigner aesthetics in the entire franchise, and it's exactly what I was hoping for with Halo Infinite. I do really enjoy the Harbinger boss fight in that room as well, don't get me wrong, but this level is just carried purely by how damn good everything looks in it. Absolutely spectacular. And another absolutely spectacular level is the silent cartographer, which is going to go 
There. S plus tier right in the middle. I think the Solent Cartographer is a fantastic example of an exploration based Halo level. Granted, I don't like it quite as much as other people. I think it's like a 9.9 out of 10, but I don't think it's a 10 out of 10 like other people do. I think I, I would have liked it more if there were more underground sections to, to go to. Um, but nevertheless, exploring the island still, still to this day has not gotten old. The unique encounters that you get as you go further down into the facilities and also the different routes you can take to get to certain facilities are always really good for replayability as well. Out of all of Halo's levels, Silent Cartographer is probably one of the top three in terms of replayability and it's also for me one of the probably top five in terms of aesthetic. That infinite chasm that Chief kicks the rock down just looks so creepy and alien and ancient and just beyond our comprehension. The Storm. The Storm is going to go into A tier, but near the bottom. Uh, I think the Scarab fight is fantastic, and of course, it's our introduction to Halo 3's Scarab, which is easily the best in, in terms of encounter design. Um, but the rest of the level will kind of kind of all right it's no, like i said it's nothing too special i don't think it's good but it doesn't stand as its own unique experience beside the scarab encounter which is really what pulls it into a tier were it not for the scarab encounter i'd say mid to low b tier but the scarab is just excellent swords of sanghelios this is probably my third favorite halo 5 level i'm gonna put it in mid B tier. I like the Mantis run at the end quite a lot. Um, and some of the caverns and caves that you fight in as well are pretty cool. The best bit at the end is saving the Arbiter, or rather witnessing the Arbiter save himself, killing those two elite assassins. Um, but other than that, like I said, it suffers from like Halo 5's gameplay for me, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, it's it, it tries to pretend to be like open in some areas, like multiple pathways, but in reality, the pathways are almost identical. So they don't feel that varied from one another. Uh, it's not too replayable either, but the theming of it and also the design of the ancient elite temples is really cool. Tayari Plaza, the first main level of Halo 3 ODST, is going to go at the top of B tier. I like it, I really like the music, and I absolutely love that one section where Buck stumbles across the dead brutes and elites side by side. Veronica, what's with all the dead elites? What do you mean? Well, it's like a family feud, like they were killed by brutes. Is there something I should know? It's classified. Yeah, some things never change. Of course, we know it's the Great Schism, but I like that little bit of like in-universe world building. Book's desperation at the end as well, when he gets to Dare's drop pod and she's not there, I like that a lot. And then of course he runs into Romeo as well. But I, again, I think the encounters in this level aren't anything particularly special. Pillar of Autumn from Reach. First time I saw this level when I first played Reach, I remember my jaw dropping that we were going to be going to the Pillar of Autumn. The Pillar of Autumn. And we did, and I loved it. Um, I'm going to put Pillar of Autumn uh, towards the bottom of A tier, I'd say. Um, I like the section on the mat gun at the end and that holdout section. Uh, and some of the bits where you're going through like, the foundries as well in the ship breaking yard are really, really cool. We've got fantastic atmosphere. But again, it's pulled down by how just unfun I think a lot of Reach's enemies are to fight. Seeing Captain Keys again though, that was a massive, massive plus. And seeing Emil die was incredibly sad, but it was a very, very badass way to go out. Same goes for Carter as well. What a fantastic way to send out your team's captain. You're on your own, Noble. Carter out. Crevice to the east. Let's go. The tower from Halo Infinite. Bottom of A tier. I do really enjoy the tower. Again, it's kind of a short level, like many of Infinites are, uh, but I, I love it. My, my jaw, again, funnily enough, again, my jaw dropped when I first got to the tower and I saw that massive hologram of Chacklock at the base of the tower talking to me and beckoning me into the tower. That was such damn good theming and it made the whole tower section feel so much more epic. I loved as well how you had to actually use your flashlight in the tower because of how dark it is and Chacklock's fight was enjoyable for the most part. Uh, he was really just like a tougher elite zealot, but he was still pretty fun to kill because, well, elite zealots are fun to kill. And the cutscene at the end was a, a good one to pull on the old heartstrings. Tip of the spear from Reach. This is going to go towards the top of B tier. Um, 
gameplay wise, it's all right, but the whole theming of it is just great. I love the intro cutscene where it really feels like you're going to war. I also love a lot of the kind of spectacles, like for example, when you take out the first AA gun and you see those long swords do a strafe run over to the spire and take it out. Copy, 2 Lima 4, bombing run, heading 224.6, permission granted, out. And then of course, the Spire section at the end was really, really damn cool as well. Had kind of a bit of like a horror slash desperation vibe at the start when you see all the Marines dead, but fighting up the Spire and then leaping out of it and having George catch you in the Falcon was so cool. As was seeing the Grafton get absolutely annihilated by the Long Night of Solace. That is such a surprising moment and it was handled so well. Truth and Reconciliation. I love it, but it's my least favorite Halo 1 mission, so I'm going to put it in B tier, just below Keys. I love the whole vibe of attacking a Covenant ship and saving the captain, but out of all the Halo 1 missions, it's the one that I find myself getting a bit bored on. I don't on any of the others besides Truth and Rec. It's probably because I've played it so many times, but I don't know. I, I, I love it, but I just don't love it as much as the other Halo 1 missions. On Legendary though, it's a nightmare because Captain Keys has a needler at the end and he always runs to the front and gets himself killed. That is such a nightmare. But exploring all the alien corridors and mysterious hallways is just such a fun experience. Sovereign Highway. This is going to go at the bottom of A tier as well. Really fun mission. I love that bit where the Covenant carrier ship flies above you when you're going down the highway. That's so, so sick. Um, but realistically, nothing much really happens in the level. It's got some fantastic vehicular gameplay, don't get me wrong. But it's another one of those missions that doesn't really do anything you need to make it stand above the rest. Two Betrayals, absolutely incredible level. It's probably the lowest S plus tier Halo 1 level of all of them, but I, Two Betrayals I absolutely adore. Um, it's got pretty much everything of a sort in the control room, except A, the Flood and Sentinels are also present, and B, it's at night time. It's in, in such a comfy nighttime scenario, I love it. That final section in particular, when uh, Undercover of Night starts playing, it's the final push towards the Banshees to get to the final generator, just the atmosphere of that, even though you're fighting space zombies and a really, really advanced alien religion, at the same time, it's just so comfy. Unconfirmed, this is the other Meridian level from Halo 5. D tier, I don't really have much to say about it, to be honest with you. It's the first time you fight the Warden, uh, which kind of says it all, I think. Uplift Reserve. I'm going to put this towards the top of B tier. Very cool idea for a vehicle mission going through an old zoo. I love that. I love seeing the Covenant try and take over that and adopt it as a landing site to get into Mombasa. And I also love the final cutscene as well. Also, it's got a fantastic Vidmaster challenge as well. I think it's doing the entire thing on foot, I believe, uh, which is not easy on Heroic or Legendary, but it's not the best vehicle level in all of Halo. There are definitely better ones, which is why I've ranked it B tier. Uprising from Halo 2 goes firmly, firmly into S plus tier. Possibly the best atmospheric mission in the entire franchise. It's like right after, of course, Quarantine Zone, where you've seen Arbiter get betrayed. It's the culmination of that, and it's the start of the next part of Arbiter's journey, rallying against the Brutes and the Covenant and getting revenge for him and his species being betrayed. And my God, does it do it so well. By the prophets, what have these Brutes done? They have shed our brother's blood, and for that they must die. Sell it. So much for a stealthy advance. This is my favorite Halo 2 mission. It's just the atmosphere and the narrative of it all is just so, so damn good. Fighting alongside the elites and getting your own back on the brutes, just it will never get old. And the last section as well with Reclaim oh, is it Reclaimer or Unyielding playing in the background when you're in the Spectre, going through those really cool valleys and ravines in the cliffside. I just absolutely adore this level from a theming standpoint, music, narrative, gameplay, everything perfect. Penultimately, we have the first level of Halo Infinite, Warship Gabracken, and I'm going to put this honestly low A tier. I thought this is a pretty good first mission. Um, the enemy variety is pretty simple, as with all first missions. It's just brutes, grunts, and jackals. Nothing too crazy, but it's a great reintroduction to the brutes. Trail, 
not stronger. All stations report in. All stations report in. All watch commanders, briefing at 0600. I love the intro as well, where Chief finds the body of the Marine and the Warthog, and then grapples into the hangar bay of Gabracken. I love how it took that standard first Halo mission of having the human ship being raided by the Covenant, and flipped it on its head and had the the well, Covenant banner ship being raided by the humans. This is a great flip on a tradition that I thought worked really, really well. Oh, and also that escape bit towards the end where you have to grapple over all those bases that are falling down is so fun. And it's precisely why the grapple is such a satisfying new mechanic. And then finally, we have Winter Contingency, the mission that starts off all of Reach and that I think sets the stage amazingly for what's to come in that game's story. I'm going to put Winter Contingency mid A tier because again, like I said, the gameplay I'm not a fan of. However, the theming and atmosphere of all of it, in addition to the kind of like open section of the valley where you can go to the marine and civilian holdouts in different orders was nice for replayability, I think. And it also puts on display how well mobile team work together at certain points. It does it at quite a few different points throughout the level. Whoa. On your knees, now! They're not rebels, they're farmers. Look at them. Ask them what they're doing here. Meet Kerestikit. Hiding, sir. Take nap Ajir, as some said, dot Asia Chodlat Yat. She called us as neighbors were attacked last night. He heard screams. Gunfire. Stopped around sunrise. Says something in the fields killed his son. Something. Commander, be advised. I'm reading heat signatures in that structure directly east of your position. Over. Copy that. Get them back inside. Osman Tom Bepoli. Getting. And at each point, it shows how cohesive of a team they are. Even though Noble Six is a very new addition to the team, it shows that they can get along and work together very well because, I mean, after all, they are Spartans, right? We've been engaged! Bad guy coming out! Negative four, stay on the entrance. Two, handle her. Five and six, clear the hole. And so, there you have it. Not only was that quite possibly the longest video I've ever made, but that is how I would rank every single level from Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, Reach, 4, 5, and Infinite. Let me know your rankings if you agree with mine or disagree. Let me know where you'd rank them. Like with before, the link to this tier list can be found in the description and in the top comment as well. So go make your own if you want to. And with that said, let's run this video out ASAP because it's so damn long. I want to give a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting over there as per usual. Thank you all so very much. And thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.